talk about a busy weekend for the Republican presidential race. Early Sunday morning, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels announced online he will not run for president. And then just a few hours later, former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty released a video online declaring he will run. Pawlenty is now in Iowa to officially kick off his presidential campaign today. Governor Pawlenty, good morning. Good morning, Erica. Sir, let's set aside for a minute what you think you can do for the country. What even may be your campaign platform? Why personally would you want this job, which is arguably one of the most difficult and thankless? Well, I love this country and it's in big trouble. We're, it's a federal government that's out of control. The spending is out of control. The debt and the deficit has to be tackled. We got to get this economy growing. And I did that in Minnesota. I was one of the few governors in the country to get an A grade from the Cato Institute on fiscal management. I know how to balance budgets. I know how to tackle spending. I know how to get economies growing. And in my state, we led the way back under very difficult circumstances. It's a very liberal state. If you can do it there, you can do it anywhere. So I'm running for president to get this spending and out of control federal government back in control and to grow this economy, and I can do it. Let, let's tackle that spending for a minute. You write in USA Today this morning, government money isn't free, saying tr cuts rather are needed in the trillions and can't just be from people's favorite programs. How do you really cut, though? Give me a good idea. Are we talking about entitlements? Are we talking about defense spending? Where are you going to make a big difference if elected in the budget? Well, we're going to have to look the American people in the eye and tell them the truth, and that's what I'll be talking about today and throughout this campaign. And it starts with making sure that you're willing to have the courage and do have the courage to not only say it, but to do it. So if you look at federal spending, we're going to have to tackle entitlements as one part of bringing spending under control. So we have to look the American people in the eye and say to younger people, the next generation, we're going to have to gradually raise the retirement age and Social Security over time. We're going to have to look wealthy uh, seniors in the eye and say, you know what? Uh, for the cost of living adjustment, not the whole program, but at least the cost of living adjustment, we're going to have to means test that. So if you're wealthy, you may not get as big of a cost of living adjustment. Those and many others like it are the kinds of things that we have to say, but we also have to do. And this president, President Obama, won't even tackle in any detail at all those kinds of reforms and, or any reforms. He's been absent in this regard. We need a leader who's going to get this deficit and spending under control. He won't do it. I will. What about raising taxes? Because, and I bring this up again, you say government money isn't free. At some point, do you have to look at raising taxes? And do people have to pay more for what's needed in this country? Well, I don't think you can make an argument that America is undertaxed. If you compare our tax structure to the rest of the world competitively, we're a highly taxed country. We need to do those things that shrink government so we can grow our economy. And if you talk to the job providers in this country, and I talk to them every day, they say, get the government off my back. They don't say put more burdens on me. They say put fewer burdens, lighter burdens on me. That's the secret to getting the jobs and the economy going. That's what's going to bring quality of life opportunities back to most American families. But if you lower taxes too much on businesses, you, of course, you need something coming in because there is this, this wide deficit which we talk so much about. You need revenue. Well, of course, you need revenue, but our economy continues to grow. And if you don't raise any tax rates at all, if the economy is growing, you'll receive more revenue. And in fact, if you look back at the history of this country, every time there's been a tax cutting president, John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, it's actually stimulated economic growth, not put it in reverse. And so we can look to both Kennedy and Reagan and others for that lesson. And I think history proves it out. Cutting taxes helps ignite the economy and grow jobs. But we also got to get our spending under control. We don't have a revenue problem, we have a spending problem. And the spending in this country and the federal government is out of control and we have a president who's unwilling or unable to look the American people in the eye and say that and actually do something about it to bring it under control. Like I said, that's why I'm running. I'll get it, get it done. Governor Tim Pawlenty, thanks for your time this morning, sir. You're welcome, America. Thank you.